Sometimes when we have a collection of values, it's useful to have them in a particular order. For example, if we want to display a collection of values to the user, it might make more sense to the user to see these values sorted in order. Another reason might be because we want to use another algorithm, such as binary search, that requires the data to be in order in order to work. We're going to look at binary search a bit more in the next video, but first of all, we need a way to actually sort our data. So we're going to be looking at bubble sort. We start off with a collection of values. In this case, we're using an array because the collection doesn't need to change in size. So it's actually better in this case to just use an array. A links list would also work absolutely fine, but we've chosen to use an array for now. We can't sort a collection of values if we don't have any values in the collection. So let's fill these with some values. So let's say maybe four, one, two, uh, six, three, and five. We also need to know whether we want to sort the values in ascending order or descending order. So do we want one, two, three, four, five, six, or uh, let's go from the same side, six, five, four, three, two, one. Sorting a collection of values is actually a pretty complex task. You as a human pr could probably sort this list of six items quite easily. But if I asked you to explain to a computer in computer language how to sort a collection of any size, that suddenly becomes a lot more tricky. Let's take two numbers at a time. Let's take this four and the one. Let's ignore the rest of the four numbers for now. If we've got a four and a one, a four on the left and a one on the right, and we want to, to sort in ascending order, so the smaller value should be on the left. This is quite a bit easier. We can compare these two values directly. We can say that four is greater than one. And so it should go on the right of one. Or in other words, if the first item is greater than the second item, then we need to swap the items around. And we've actually just kind of said that in computer language or language that the computer can understand. We can compare two numbers, or we can compare the values of two numbers. And we can conditionally do something if the first item is greater than the second item. We can also swap the two values quite easily. In some programming languages, you can literally do uh, a comma b equals b comma a. In other languages, it's a little bit more complicated. You need to introduce a temporary va uh, variable to store one of the values that's going to be overridden. But the point is, we can swap these two values quite easily. And so now, if we have a collection of two items, we can sort that. So how do we sort a bigger collection? How do we sort a collection of six items instead of two? Well, one thing we could do is compare the first two values. And if the first one is greater than the second one, then we need to swap these two. And then we can move along a bit. Then we can compare the second item to the third item. And in this case, with the one and the two, um, they don't need to be swapped. But if we've swapped the four and the one, then we're going to have a four here. We would need to do another swap between these two. And once we've done that check with these two, the second and third item, then we can move on to the third and the fourth item, and then the fourth and the fifth, and then the fifth and the sixth item. We can go all the way to the end. So let's see the final result if we do that. So first of all, we're, we're looking at these two values and we know that these two need to be swapped. So when we press this sort button here, it's going to swap these two values. And I've also got it so that it highlights the two values that have just been, uh, the two uh, array indices that have just been checked. So these two have just been swapped. And so we know that the next comparison is going to be this four and this two, which needed to be swapped again. 
like this. We've got the four and the six. In this case, it's fine. We don't need to do a swap. And then the six and the three, we do need to swap. And the six and the five, we do need to swap. So what have we done here? We've gotten to the end. What, what have we achieved? Well, you might have noticed that whenever we encounter the largest number in the collection, in this case, it's a six, the six will always be swapped into the right location, into the right, uh, into B, if you will. We're looking at A and B, and A and B are moving across the collection. The six should always go to the right. And that means that once we get from the start all the way to the end of the collection, that the six is always going to make it to the end. The largest value is always going to be pushed right to the left, to the right hand side after the first uh, iteration through the, uh, through the collection. The bubble sort algorithm actually gets its name from this idea of when the largest item has been found, it will always move up one until it gets to the end. And then what will happen the next time around is the next biggest item will be pushed to the right until it gets to the second rightmost location. You can almost think of it as a bubble that's underwater that is slowly floating to the surface. Since the collection isn't fully sorted yet, you can see that we've got this, uh, the four and the three are out of order. Because they are out of order, we need to go through the whole collection again and repeat the steps that we've done so far. So we're going to look at the one and the two. Those are fine. Those don't need to be changed. The two and the four are also fine. But when we look at the four and the three, we do need to do a swap. And then we keep going and we go to the end. And we need to repeat this process again and again and again until we go through the whole collection without making a single swap. And that's how we know that we've got our collection in order. If we check the first and the second item, and it's fine, and then the second and the third, and it's fine, all the way to the end, and we go through the whole collection, we don't need to make a swap, that means that the collection is in order. So let's just keep going. We go next, and that's fine, next, it's fine. And only once we get to the end, and we've not made a single swap, can we know that we have finished. And that's it, that's bubble sort. In the next video, we'll be talking about the linear search algorithm as well as the binary search algorithm.